Welcome. My name is Nicole, and this practice is all about the beginner. So if you feel unsure, if you're looking to just start a yoga practice, maybe you're just curious, uh, I hope that you will find this video informative. So I'm going to go over here right now a little bit of basic information. Um, and I'd like you to be able to walk away feeling like you would know what to expect if you went to a live in class yoga session and as well as maybe perhaps understand the different types of yoga just a little bit better so maybe when you're out there browsing on the internet you're like oh restorative or half you'll you'll be hopefully just feel a little more comfortable making choices so let's go ahead and dive right on in i know there's more than a little information out there so hopefully i can yoga is a discipline of the mind body and spirit a tool that can you can use to help you connect deeper with yourself and those around you with nature there are other aspects to the yogic discipline but for our purpose when you move your body and you connect movement with breath this is yoga asana or the posture part of yoga so it's a beautiful place to begin and traveling through these poses you will gain strength and ease and learn to use your body in ways that you didn't know that you could. <laughs> uh, however, with that being said, I think that when we come in to this practice, at least, I, I don't wanna speak for everybody, but for when I came into this practice, um, I thought that you had to like achieve the pose, like get it to be perfect looking or you were not receiving any of the benefits. <laughs> uh, that is absolutely not true. And even if you just come and sit on your mat and, or watch a, a yoga, you are still gaining benefits from that, right? Because we know now what the brain sees or, you know, it believes. And so in some way you are, you are getting the benefits of the practice, even if you're not practicing at all, even if you're just watching or when I cue a breath, even if you're breathing, you know, so it's really interesting to think about. So just be proud of yourself. Just showing up on your mat is enough, you know, so there's no need to stress. You will get the benefits immediately, but you know, like life, it just takes a little while. Journaling is a great idea so you can actually see progress, but progress always happens a little bit slower. It's not always, it's like, um, yeah, it just kind of like sneaks up on you. So give yourself credit, be easy on yourself. Always when you, if you go to a class, take breaks when you need to take breaks. There's just no need to try to overdo it. It's not a competition. It's really an inward experience, being able to learn your body in a new way, to move it in a new way. Uh, it, it, so if you can practice loving the experience right from the beginning and always being okay with it, then then hopefully they can, can take this into a lifelong practice. Uh, word of caution, the only time I've really ever injured myself is when I try to overdo it. So, or when I'm exhausted and you know, so for instance, early on, I felt inspired by someone who had, uh, they had done all the poses and they had learned them all in a year and a half. And I was like, oh, I, I can do that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't maybe not even two months later, I, my hamstrings were really sore and I went to class and I, I did get an assist from the teacher. I'm not, I don't know, and I go, there's no really no need to place blame, but I tore a little bit of my hamstring. So it was like a good, it took so long and it really, can I talk about like ego popping, you know, you can do, I couldn't do anything for a long time or I would just do, I did what I could, but it was really reduced and taught me how to slow down and use more strength. So 
I know I'm going. There's just so many lessons that can be learned here, but really it, it, they're like lessons about yourself. So know that going in, let it be a selfish practice and do what you need to do to take care of yourself because that's really, that's what's really advanced. If you can do that, that's advanced. And, and you know, you'll save teachers from, from being stressed out because I, most people don't take care of themselves. And I think this is common in, in life too. It's so hard to take care of ourselves. So you can, you kind of can see that bleed over onto the mats. People want to overdo it and be a little bit extreme and and then that that's where that's where we get hurt or you know so let's learn about ourselves and uh now that i've gone on long enough about that i let's take a look at some of the different kinds of yoga and what they're about but really you could go to any kind of yoga class. This is just, there's just some nuanced differences. The only one that's like hugely different is Kundalini yoga. And I don't know if I put a slide of that in here when we go to look at those right now, but Kundalini yoga is a whole, is a whole different, really amazing. I think that they're all amazing, but that's like, it would be, you would be doing like one like movement and breath and it's just a whole different, we're not even gonna get into that now. Just know if you see Kundalini yoga, it's nothing I covered and uh, you're in for an experience. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and uh, look over a few types of yoga. All right, first we have Hatha yoga. Hatha yoga focuses on balancing and aligning the body and mind through a combination of held postures and pranayama. Pranayama is breathing exercises. It is a gentle and accessible form of yoga suitable for all levels. A lot of my classes are hatha, hatha based. I like to hold poses a little bit longer and talk about alignment and kind of just marinate and build strength. Next, we have vinyasa yoga. Vinyasa yoga is characterized by flowing sequences of poses that are synchronized with the breath. It offers a dynamic and invigorating practice that builds strength, flexibility, and mindfulness. So vinyasa yoga is also in my practices. It's a combination of hatha and vinyasa. I vinyasa is great, and especially once you learn what the names of the poses are a little bit more and you feel a little bit more comfortable so that you can flow a little bit easier when you hear the name of the pose and the cues. Ashtanga yoga. This is a... These are, these are strong yogis here. Ashtanga yoga follows a specific sequence of postures, so the same sequence, and is known for its challenging nature. It focuses on breath control, strength, and stamina. This practice is best suited for those seeking a physically demanding and disciplined practice. Yep. But, you know, it's fun to dabble if you would like. And almost a lot of the poses are, you know, the same as you're going to find in other classes as well. So, you know, it's just about knowing what you want. Restorative yoga. Restorative yoga is a slower, more restful, passive approach to yoga. Meant to melt away muscle tension, create space in the body, lower stress rooted in the same discipline with many familiar poses restorative yoga is less about building strength but finding deep mental and physical relief so at this restorative classes you might set yourself up to be real hell comfy you're you're not going to feel like you're working at all and you would hold poses for 10 to 20 minutes. Um, you might have eye pillow, you know, it's almost like going into a little bit of a sleep meditation when you're there, totally going inward. 
Uh, it's a super healing practice that I think enhances the other practices. So now that we have talked about a few so, of these. So no matter what you choose, they're all really wonderful. Then it kind of goes back again to about learning ourselves and knowing what we need in that moment. Are we just totally wiped out? Do we need a restorative practice? Are we sluggish and got the blahs? Do we need something to like pick us up? Um, yeah, so practicing learning those things and balancing and any of them feel welcome, any of them. Um, something else to note is that everyone tends to use all these different names. So <laughs> I might've mentioned, I might've mentioned that already. So yeah, just, just keep that in mind that the names are, <clears throat> they're all over the board, but, and if you want to like, you know, really be accurate, I guess you would use the Sanskrit name. You could look that up and that should hold true across the line. So Let's see, what else do I have here to talk about? Okay, what to bring. So let's imagine we're going to our first yoga class. What would you want to bring? I'm kind of a minimalist, so I think, you know, slip-on shoes are great. Uh, I think being barefoot is, is pretty much ideal. Uh, I feel like you slip around too much in socks, and uh, they may make special socks now, I think, if that's a thing for you, you don't like that, but... Uh, you don't want to be barefoot, so maybe easing out of footwear, uh, a mat. So a lot of places will have them. So that, I guess that's up to you if you want to take the risk, but you probably want your own mat and a water bottle. And if you're a really sweaty person, so I don't like, I'll just drip. So something to, to mop that up sometimes is good. <laughs> and then occasionally we will use props to enhance our practice. So not necessarily to, because that's what we have to do, but like literally to enhance your practice. So I think everybody always looks at the blocks and then like, like it's a weakness. It's, it's not a weakness. It, like, it will get you to where you want to go faster, I promise. So uh and oh try to be clean i think that's just a given you know and go someplace here you may be oh forewarning some classes are just large and so you'll have people right next to you in front of you behind you that's not your thing just be prepared to know that that could happen um and then everyone's trying to respect each other's space, so you don't want to be stinky, and you also don't want to be over perfumey. So just just try to be clean and respectful of you know how how that's going there. So a lot of sensitive yoga people. <laughs> I love you all. <laughs> uh, I think we get in these practices, and some people start to take ourselves a little too seriously. But um, so I hope that this has been a little bit. I hope you feel welcome. That you are welcome. That you don't need to be anything tall, short. Everybody's good, and that we have found so many ways now to modify and to make it your own. So if you need help, email me. I will try to help you. Teachers love to help. So anyways, now we're done with that. So I think let's, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started and we're gonna do a little practice and I'm gonna take lots of time to try to explain everything and like how it might go so that you still feel comfortable when you go to a yoga practice. And to get started, we're gonna start in a seated position and I'll start with some options here. So over time, my legs are just like, they, you know, they've fallen out and I become more flexible, but this isn't, this isn't normally where we start, right? So having a block handy or a pillow or something to sit up on can really help your knees. So when we're sitting here, take the pressure off the knees. If you're feeling it there, sit up higher so that this is higher than your knees. And you can have them crossed or 
if this you can't sit like this maybe have the, just have your your leg out in front of you always feel like that you can modify and and change it up in a way that's going to feel better on your body no one no one wants you to sit in pain so typically we either start seated or standing usually seated in a class and the teacher would explain perhaps what the class is about uh, and then we we might ohm or not ohm depending on the teacher and so let's just bring our hands to our heart center if you would like this is, everything is optional and available for you to make your own i want you to be i just want you to be comfortable and know that it's okay for you to make it your own so how i do it and i you know let's bring our hands to our heart center it's just kind of bringing it all in centering ourselves and this is where I might offer, we could start breathing. So you can take a deep breath in through your nose. And out through your nose. In through your nose. And out through your nose. And one more round in. Exhale out. And I also like to give a chance for each person to set an intention for the class, something that I overlooked in the past, but I have found to be very relevant and powerful. And I just, it's just an offering. How I do it is I'll just sit here on the first thing, word that pops into my mind uh that would be you know for my intention so for me right now that was clarity uh, possibly because <laughs> i want this to be very clear for you so you feel confident uh but you know it's really whatever arises for you take another deep breath in and out Beautiful. All right, let's come on to all fours now. And a great, I'm not gonna be tabletop, you know, however. So the first thing you wanna consider is your base. What are your hands doing? What are your feet doing? Where are your knees doing? You wanna be stacked, wrist, under your shoulders, knees under your hips, and you can have your toes curl under or flat. You just want to create an awareness and know what's happening there. You want to be gripping, really have active hands. And you're going to be breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. And many times we practice with an ujjayi breath and you would use this breath throughout the entire practice and it's the same as your normal breath just you might breathe in a little bit deeper through your nose and then you constrict the back of your throat slightly so that you hear it on the exhale And it sounds a little bit like the ocean and it's a heating breath. So it'll help you stay warm throughout your practice as well as give you something to bring your mind back to when it starts wandering because that's what all our minds do. All right, so deep breath in. Hands are still pressing, toes are curled under. And now let's do a little cat-cow, which is a super common movement and probably one of the best for your spine. 
So I'm going to turn here, but you don't need to turn. So we, we're here, we're in a neutral spine and we have checked our base and our hands are bright and our, this is under, this is a 90 and our wrists are under our shoulders. So we're stacked properly. And then if we arch like this and we're coming into a cow and we're really trying to point that booty to the sky as well as press down through the hands and a way to spread the heart and collarbones open. And we're lifting the chin some. And then we tuck and go the other way for cat. Really puffing up through the back of the heart. Really pushing the hands into the earth. And breathing in and out through the nose. And then come back to neutral for a moment. And now for here, we're going to experience the breath with the movement. So we're going to inhale, arch into cat and exhale into cow but you're going to do it with your own breath at your own pace as smoothly as possible so just take a few rounds here inhale and then exhale Beautiful. So, okay. So the next pose that we do a lot or that's offered a lot is downward dog. And it, it may be a beginner will pose, but it, it's not very, it's pretty hard. It was pretty complicated. So I'm just gonna, you can always modify if you can't do a downward dog right away or that's just not going to work for you by either a, just a, a puppy position or you could just come down into child's pose whatever whatever you need to do to make it safe for you because i'm going to show you right now so we're on all fours our hands are bright, toes are curled under, and then on the exhale, we're gonna engage our core and press back. And bend your knees a whole bunch here, and look forward first between your hands and make sure that your hands are pressing bright and actively, maybe so much that you can pick the outer edges of your hand up bright and active hands to protect the rest of your shoulders, arms. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and come down for a minute so you can, you can t check this out. If you felt like that was just torture on your shoulders, what I see happen a lot is really long downward dogs. So like, way way long uh this is a lot more work on my shoulders but if i come in and i just bend the knees more and really stick my booty high up in the air <clears throat> then it takes some of the pressure off my shoulders somewhere at this angle so something to consider and if you'd like to go ahead and try it out now again go ahead so we'll go all fours, toes curled under, press back. See if you can feel it in your shoulder. Another thing you can do is use the blocks here. 
And this is great too if you're trying to build hand strength. So really grip these blocks wherever, maybe on the front tops, and then come into downward dog. No, on the bottom. And then grip. And then you're and then you even have even more length here, and it's even easier on the shoulders. But the idea here is you would want to focus first on the hands by bending the knees a whole bunch, really pressing the arms straight, lifting your booty as high as into the air as you can. And very lastly, once you feel like you have gotten all that, then you can work towards straightening your legs. But yeah, so just know that, yeah, maybe in all these beginner classes and stuff, but downward dog is, it's a challenging pose and, you know, you'll gain a lot of strength. And that Ashtanga yoga, they do a lot of downward dogs. So if that's your thing, there you go. But you don't have to do downward dogs. It doesn't have to. I just, just want and to emphasize it. it's not even... You don't ever have to even do that to, to get benefits. You know, you could just do cat cows. You could just show up. So honor yourself. And if you just, you know, work on building some upper body strength first before you start trying to do a bunch of downward dogs. You don't want to blow out your shoulders. And just take note if you're you're feeling stuff there. Or it's all about awareness. <laughs> so, okay. So we did downward dog and... I bet you all know what a plank is. <laughs> we'll meet there. All right, here we are <laughs> in our plank. And honestly, this is just a great position. Drop the knees if you want to. Suck in the core. Lift through the back of the heart. I almost just suggest doing this over downward dog until you feel, especially if, especially if you need to drop the knees, but once you feel like you can get comfortable holding a nice plank for a little while, then then, then work on all your, up, your down dogs. Otherwise, no judgment here. I didn't wait. I just, <laughs> I think so. I'm just letting you know that you have the option. So plank. So we're all the way down. And we're going to talk about Cobra. We're going to talk about upward facing dog, which are in a lot of sun salutations, which I will show you next. But uh, so when we're so here we are, this is let's get a little length in our low back first. So maybe shift side to side, pulling yourself forward some, maybe lift one leg up, stretch it back, lower it. The other one, stretch it back, lower it. And now, hands under your shoulders and take them off the ground. Check your shoulders. What are they doing? Are they like, roll them up and onto your back. Now on the inhale, lift up. So this is a baby cobra, no arms, and we're breathing in and out. So, and then Cobra is you use your arms and it's a very, it's a much larger back bend. So in the beginning or when we're doing sun salutations, I recommend uh, doing it with no arms so that you're not cranking into your low back and all you're getting is strength here. So that's super nice. And then another one that's hot is upward dog. And the difference between Cobra an upward dog is everything comes off the floor. See that knees off the floor? Everything. Wrists are under shoulders, opening the heart, looking up. And this is, you know, this is pretty hardcore. So all these variations you can do depending on how you feel or shanks with just your elbows under your shoulders. And then you lift up like this and it's super supported. <laughs> We're gonna inhale into plank now again. 
and then exhale, suck in that navel, press back into downward dog. Here we can practice noticing again if we feel like it'd be better on blocks to really get some height, to take it out of the shoulder so much, if we're bending the knees enough. But go ahead, bend the knees, look forward, onto the toes, and walk to the front of your mat. So I'm gonna scoot back here so that you can see me. But another thing that tends to be very common in classes is going through these sun salutations. And it's a series of movements that um, I guess are meant to warm you up. Say hello to the sun. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you maybe a little bit how that might go. So we would start by inhaling our arms up overhead and then exhale, fold all the way over. You can have your feet together or under your hips. You can have knees bent. And so you reach the floor here on the exhale, inhale halfway, lift up. So you're just trying to pull a little length into your back and then exhale, fold again. Inhale all the way to the top. And that was one. So, and then they might become a little bit more dynamic. So exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway, look up, pull that length into your back. Exhale, fold. Now inhale, walk out into a plank. Inhale at the top, exhale lower, inhale. Here's where we do that baby cobra. So apologize for the lack of view here. <laughs> so baby cobra, cobra, or upward dog. So in just beginning though, totally just recommend the baby cobra with no arms and then and back into plank exhale into downward dog then you'd bend your knees step forward again inhale halfway put that lift exhale fold all the way and then inhale all the way to the top so you can see how that was a little bit of a flow and how you were moving through with your breath. So another version of the sun salutation, you would start adding our warriors in. So let's experiment a little bit with that. Inhale, arms up, overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway, look up. Exhale, step out into plank. Inhale at the top. Exhale, you can always have your knees to the floor as well for half plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, baby cobra, no arms. Exhale, plank, take a breath. And then exhale, downward dog. <clears throat> Take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Now raise your right leg high to the sky and lift up on that back ball of that left foot. Start to shift forward, bring the knee in to the navel and step through between your hands. So if you're like, yeah, right. Um, you can take several steps to get there. This is a tricky one for everyone to get. Or maybe you're in downward dog. And if you have blocks here, there's another little, a little trick here is, right? So hi, but now look, I have so much extra room now 
to come through. So that might be helpful. That might work. Maybe not. Maybe you maybe just bring it around and then scoot it in. Experiment with several things and, and just keep practicing. It will get easier over time. So now we have this right hand between our hands and we're gonna drop the back foot. So it's that kind of like this, this angle pointing 45 sort of ish. And they're a big bend in the front knee and we're gonna come up. So this is warrior two where my facing the long edge of my mat. My front thigh is rolling out. When I look down, I can see my big toe. What I don't want, or if I'm feeling knee pain, notice are you coming way over, way, way forward? Maybe shift your weight back some. We can also play with energy here a little bit by squeezing the legs together, really pressing down, pulling together, and the inhale. And then on the exhale, pressing them away. So you're kind of working opposing muscles here and working your breathing. And then go ahead and straighten that leg. Toes point forward. Now we're gonna switch. So we're coming in to warrior two on the left side at the back of our mat. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose with our left thigh rolling out. When we look down, we can see our big toe. We don't wanna be going way one way or the other. We wanna find a balance here. Maybe we play a little with energy by pulling the legs together, squeezing in, and then exhale, pressing away. Inhale, and exhale. Last round, inhale. And exhale. And straighten that back leg. Point the toes forward. Come back to the front of your mat. Come down over your front foot. This would be a lunge. Lift to bring that back, those back feet together. Now we're back in plank. Inhale at the top. Exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, baby cobra, no arms. Exhale, press it back into downward dog. With a lot of bend in the knees, with the booty real high, shifting side to side, opening the side body. Hands are super active. Breathing in and out. In. And out. Bend your knees a whole bunch. Walk, step, hop to the front of your mat, inhale. Halfway look up, exhale, fold all the way. And then inhale, arms reach up. And we come back to standing. So that would have been a sun C, I think. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you will notice though, those seem to be almost in all the classes. They really help warm you up. Teachers do all little variations, but it's kind of a similar pattern. Um, just, just to kind of give you an idea here. So you, so we do our little warm up. we do our breathing, we might work with some sun salutations, and then maybe we come to a standing balance pose like tree. So let's, let's practice a tree. So let's put our weight on the left foot, bring your right knee high, we open it, and now, depending, where you're at, and every day is different as well, of course, too, so it can either go above the ankle a little bit, your foot, or you can go, you don't want it on the knee, so just make sure you're above a joint. And hands to heart center. And breathe, 
and balance, be a tree. It's okay to fall out, it's okay to wobble. It's like, if you're not used to balancing, that's what you're gonna do. That's how you're, that's how you're gonna learn. But, you know, so even if you can't, even if you're falling out, you're still learning. You're still trying to form those pathways so that the next time you show up, gets a little bit easier, hopefully. And then come back to center. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. So put the, the weight in the opposing foot that you just weren't doing. So this is my weight in my right foot, lifting that left knee, turning the leg out. Like it's turning out of the leg and then right either here and always feel if you need to practice with something a wall it, you know do so it's that's totally acceptable um it'll be easier in the long run if you you feel stable to begin with so here or above the knee just not on the joints Breathing in and out. And come on out. And now we're gonna go ahead and, and come back down onto the floor. So, um, now that we're on the floor, so you, you'd move through all these things, do some balance, standing work, and then typically move down to the floor for some stretching, hip openers, back bends. So pigeon is a really common hip opener, and sometimes that's challenging right from the beginning. So this is pigeon would be, look something along the lines of this with my knee behind my left wrist. My hips are squared forward. Um, but when you're beginning, and when I was just beginning, because this pose was extremely uncomfortable for my knee, it doesn't, I don't know, it didn't work out for me. But uh, some ways you can modify, you can come up on a block or pillow and have this lift here so it takes some of the intensity out. If you feel this knee is bothering you, jamming into the floor, then add a pillow there then that's totally okay. Otherwise, you can come into a figure four seated like this. And then the further out, the less intense. And then you could bring it in for more intensity. Just make sure you keep this foot active. So, and then as well as, I don't have my chair right here, but you could just sit on a chair and bring it this so the same kind of effect. So lots of options. It's this we're getting into into that that hip. So coming back, <laughs> let's do a pigeon here. Let's come into it from all fours. And I'm just gonna bring my slide my right knee up towards my right wrist and then kind of scooch it all back down. You can also use blocks here uh, to help you stay upright. And again, if you need to put it there for support. So squeeze those legs together. So if you need, so you can lift up off the floor if you needed to. That's very active, that's kind of the goal here. And then if you'd like to come forward, you can. You don't have to. And then here's just take a moment to breathe into all those sensations. Imagine sending breath to where you feel those sensations. And then 
go ahead and come up. Pull the back toes under to lift. To kind of just cut back into all fours here. And then we'll do the other side. Just bringing my left knee in now. And just kind of, kind of scooting on into it. You know, you're, you know, tendency sometimes is to want to kind of fall out like this, but you really want to be trying to square it all forward. And if you feel like you would like to come down, you can. And then again, once again, there's always, remember that you can always have this here. It's a great place to work it. Something to remember when you're, you're just beginning is like if you're if your body's always expecting something super intense, uh, it's gonna it's gonna clench up. So if you learn to kind of sneak up on it, and enter from a, a softer way, kind of just more gently, just slowly be like, oh, I feel the sensation right there, and then work there and breathe until that dissipates <clears throat> and then scoot a little bit more into it and breathe there. Just try to be real gentle with yourself and, and that will let your body know that it can trust you and it will open up for you uh, more quickly. From here, just to shift your hips off now to the side and bring that leg around. And we are going to come onto our backs now for a bridge, which is another really common, super great for you posture. So come all the way down onto your backs. Um, you know, fingers sort of around where your heels are. Take a moment to shift and get comfortable. And you can either grab the outsides of your mat or lift, press up, reach, clasp, and then roll the shoulders under even more. But you want your shoulders rolling under. Don't really want your spine touching the floor. And then from here, I have lifted up. I'm not overly engaged though. So I'm gonna turn it up a little bit by lifting my heels, my toes up to really engage my booty. And then as well as lifting up, I'm going to press down with my heels and pretend like I'm kicking myself in the butt to really light my hamstrings now. So now this is a really strong and engaged pose. The back of my head is pressing firmly into the earth. And then you breathe. Then to come out, release the hands, and then just slowly roll down. Fabulous. Go ahead and bring those knees in for a nice hug now. Roll around a little bit if that feels good. And where we would end a class would be Shavasana. And there has been studies about the enormous benefits of Shavasana you never have enough time in class, um, but they found 15 minutes plus is like the sweet spot. So if you're ever at home and you can marinate for that long, you definitely should. But this is the part where, you know, you just done all this hard work. It's time to relax now. Uh, just like you, so you can, you can lower your legs out onto the floor. You can let your hands fall open. 
if that's uncomfortable for your low back, you can have your knees knocked together. Everything is up to you here. You just want to find a place that's super comfortable where you don't really have to move for the next, you know, 15, 20 minutes. That's not how long we're going to stay today, but I'm just giving you an example um, that that's what the studies have shown. Super great for you. Don't skip it. Don't skip it. <laughs> All right. So go ahead, set yourself up right now. Get as comfy as you can in whatever position that looks like. I will be holding space for you. And let your whole body relax into the floor. Feet heavy, legs heavy, pelvis, shoulders, letting go even a little bit more. Take one more conscious deep breath, filling up your whole body. Inside all out and find ease. Please enjoy these next few minutes and I will be here to guide you out. Begin to bring movement back to your body, wiggling your toes and your fingers. Go ahead and roll to one side or the other. Take a deep breath in. And now. And go ahead and use your hands and push yourself back to a seated position. I really hope, I really hope that this was helpful, that you got something out of this, that you feel inspired. I just want you to know that you're welcome, that it's a grand journey. 
Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Please reach out if you have any questions. I would love to help you. <laughs> okay, namaste, which, uh, which I have been told is just me recognizing the light within you. Namaste.